All right. Thank you, Scott. Steve, hello. How are you? Hello. Hello, Jamie. Good. Thank you. Happy Monday, as always. You know, it Happy feels like we've Monday. been gone a while since uh, last Monday was the holiday. That's right. That is right. But here we are back, and it's already September 12th. That seems amazing. Um, seems like it was just September 1, not too long ago. So I hope everyone had a nice, uh, refreshing weekend and came back uh, ready to fight today, which, uh, you know, taking a look at the market uh, activity, well, not to jump ahead of the, uh, of the uh, legal ease here. Let me get that out of the way, and then we'll get on to the juicy stuff. Just want to make sure that everybody here is aware that uh, we're having these webinars to share with you on an informational level, uh, what we would call an educational level. So please don't take what we share with you here today and misconstrue it as a solicitation to buy or sell stocks, bonds, or anything um, for that matter. If you do need uh, to seek out the advice of a registered individual, it's very easy to do that. Um, there are plenty of them out there. So if you need that type of service, please seek out a registered individual. Okay. So <clears throat> as always, we're going to uh, let Steve give us his uh, two cents on uh, what the market has done recently. Mm. Um, and, you know, looking at uh, what we have here, you know, Friday through a little bit of a curveball at everybody. Uh, was a kind of a weird day on many different levels. Um, We'll do the Holly recap, and then we're going to talk about uh, one of the scans that Steve developed not too long ago um, that has been one of these uh, strategies where it only spits out a few trades a day, if even that, right, Steve? Yeah, usually just a handful. Mm -hmm. Not today. Well, today, that was not the case. And this all kind of ties into last Thursday's webinar. Exactly. Um, which, mm -hmm. <clears throat> if, if you all were in attendance... Uh, Andy and I were talking about how we're seeing things pop up that haven't been popping up. Certain animals are making an appearance uh, that haven't done so in quite a long time. And then parlaying that into the next day and today, uh, those observations proved to be interesting to say the least. All right, so without further ado, Steve, I'm just going to pass it over to you. Sure. I'll let you do your thing and we'll take a look at this uh, wackiness that has transpired yeah here we go um, we got um, we got out of the boring doldrums of the sideways uh, alley lanes we were talking about over and over um, again we're gonna get into a little bit of what Andy and Jamie were talking about on this day um, but then Friday uh, as we did not have a webinar we all had a very curious head-scratching day you know, some people were saying the Fed was was job owning uh, some pretty good, you know, interest rates are probably right around the corner again. Other crazy conspiracy theories, which I won't even go into because they're so crazy. But oh boy, um, let me just follow up with also going into the weekend. This is what we had to work with. Let me just actually let's see if I can. No, I can't spit out that one candle. Um, but going into the weekend, that's all we had to work with was that red hot poker breaking through, gapping through, and slamming through two solid lines that we've been looking through. So again, we 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 finally got our demonstration of the axiom um, staircases up and elevator down. But today, I'm, I'm just shaking my head because uh, well, let me let me not get ahead of myself. So going into the weekend, talking with Andy and Dan and and Jamie and everybody as we normally do, trying to kick out the trade ideas, trade of the week. Uh, we went ahead and decided this is going to be uh, the second time that we went ahead and went to cash. Last time was was this day back here uh, when the Brexit went nuts. There was just no reason to try and jump in front and be knife catchers for the trade of the week, which is not designed to go short. It's designed to go for longer-term trend positions. So not only did this candle really fake us out with, with that as well, because as I said, we get a candle like this that closes on lows with a 90% day. Let me just tell you, a 90% day is a day in which the, you look at all the issues uh, for equity trading, and 90% of them, at least or minimum, are trading negative and closing negative on the day. So you get every now and then you get these 90% crazy days, and uh, they usually happen on the downside, and there's usually some follow through. But there's nothing usual about this market that we've been experiencing. So we went full defensive mode, as you know, I think was every 
correct call in saying that uh, let's see how this red candle resolves itself. We could have had a nice bounce down here to test some uh, some gaps and maybe an intraday reversal and a bounce back up and a tail. And then, okay, you know, some beginnings of some semblance of some sort of resolve as to how this day was going to work out. But, you know, I, I knew... I've seen this before, you know, kind of coming back here on the uh, the market of the Brexit. It uh, has the ability to turn on a dime over the weekend if you let it. And we did it again today here. I don't know what to call this pattern uh, other than maybe the shoots and ladders, which is an old game board for those of you over 40 years old. You remember that game, shoots and ladders down and up. Uh, very unusual movement. I don't really know what to make of it. I don't like it um, because it is pretty darn screwy. Um, but let's see how it resolves, you know, uh, let's see if they can build back on this candle. We will, again, talk towards the later end of the session on uh, the bigger picture in the backdrop of what were the typical type of alerts that were going on across the board. Um, and those, those, of course, were going to be the washout alerts. But um, once again, I, back here, the, the same thing happened to the bears. Zero follow-through, a next snapping reversal back to the upside. Basically, it looks like that's what we got to go on again here today. But uh, all of these levels were pretty much upset by the Friday plunge. So let's give uh, a few more days of trading and see how this all resolves before the next trade of the week will come out. But um, I'm just kind of laughing with a smile, half smile, shaking my head on this. And uh, I know you are too, Jamie. What do you think? <laughs> it's like the market pulled its hamstring. And you know what? I, I just don't know how quickly it's going to heal, you know? Yeah. Is that is that hamstring gonna gonna heal up and is the race gonna continue or is it gonna flounder here for a little bit? Um, I mean, is it real? Is it really that simple? They were saying Fed's job owning rates on Friday today. Fed's dovish discussion today. Well, that's been going on and all the way all through this backdrop here. So I don't know what happened Friday, but boy, you know, quite the recovery today. You really don't see these types of candles back to back juxtapose like this, two giant long volatile candles in the immediate opposite direction. Um, you know, obviously reversal on the daily and in intraday chart, you know, these are what V reversals look like. We'll mm -hmm. just see what tomorrow brings, but it's still too early to call and see. Let's let's see how this thing resolves. But boy, is it ever one goofy, goofy market out there. Yep, and you know, there's another chart that uh, has been getting pretty beat up to turn today. I, I forgot to see how it closed, but our good friend Scuddy um, oh, looked, so like it was, looked like it was putting in a bottom um, today, or trying to anyway. Poor guy's been getting murdered. Look at this. Oh, hey, let's. Oh, it didn't quite make it. It would have been nice to go down there and say, hey, look at that. They went down there and tested that low. How nice of them, but they didn't quite get there. I would have much rather seen them get there before I start believing a, uh, a bounce off the lows. But Solar City certainly has its issues. Look at that. That's the line That's the, the line in the sand right there. So <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe, maybe he doesn't even want to get that close because it has already tested it once. There's no such thing as a triple bottom. Um, but if it doesn't touch, maybe it can uh, escape. But yeah, Solar City definitely has some other issues of its own going forward. But so that's the uh, the market recap. I don't quite know how to make sense of that, guys. We just got to let it see how it unfolds, how things resolve. Uh, it's like we just took a giant guitar string and stretched it as far as we could. It's a good, good analogy with those lines there. And we plucked that sucker as far as we could, and boing, and it came back the other direction. So we're going to see how it kind of slowly finds its center and where it goes from there. But uh, other than that, I don't have too much to say about that wacky daily chart. Uh, back to you, Jamie. Perfect. Let me grab it from you real quick here. All right. Before we proceed to the uh, uh, talk about Holly, just want to give everybody a peek at the performance chart. Uh, this is reflective of today's results with Holly. Um, just kind of hovering around at the tops like the market used to be doing before we had these two uh, crazy days, so to speak. Um, so, you know, just hovering at tops. Hopefully we'll be heading higher sooner. Uh, so moving right along here, let us talk about Holly and her activity and the opportunities within other than what you guys see from just the informational side. So make sure this is uh, visible to everybody. Okay. All right. So we have, you know, to some of you, this will look familiar. Maybe there's some new people out there who've never seen this before, but uh, what we're seeing right here is the main AI strategy panel it contains all of the strategies 
that made the cut for today's trading session after the analysis that was done uh, post-close Friday. So for a total amount of strategies, we had 13 show up in the hopper today. Um, four of those were short, nine were longs, but of course we can see here if we sort by the trades today count, this is showing us how many trades each strategy issued. And we can see these guys at the bottom, one, two, three, four of the strategies did not even fire. No surprise, it was three of the shorts. Um, but while we're on that topic, you know, in the past, mainly longs, maybe a short would make it every once in a while. Um, but here lately, and this kind of goes back to Thursday's webinar, Andy and I were discussing, you know, setups are showing up that have not been prevalent in the past. And this is all working off of the past four, five, six months as well. People that we keep up with in the community, on Twitter, you know, just all different types of connections and trading people throughout the uh, trading universe. Things started showing up four, five, six months ago on a very small scale. Now things are starting to show up more and more frequently. So, you know, Andy and I were commenting in last Thursday's webinar how, well, it's weird to see this many short strategies show up. Um, we had a short strategy that, that fired quite a few trades last week, uh, which is another anomaly. So those, those setups have to exist, otherwise we wouldn't be being made aware of them, all right? So the fact that more shorts are making the cut after the analysis every day is something that we can't really, you know, make an opinion uh, as to what that means right now, but what we should do is just be conscious of it so that as things progress, we can start trying to put, you know, more and more things together to give us an ample edge. But, you know, uh, right now we just need to be aware that these things are happening uh, and just be cognizant of them. Um, so, looking at the, the trade count once again, we only had 15 trades dispersed uh, among the strategies that fired today. And after everything was said and done on risk off mode, you know, on that trade count, just a little bit better than flat today, up 20 cents, um, but boy, there were some good opportunities within these trades that were issued today, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. Um, so, you know, we like to talk about the trade arounds, which are, you know, one side of the equation, and then we can talk about staying in trades or what I, I kind of like to term going risk off on a trade by trade basis. Um, and then today we also had kind of a another anomalous occurrence. Last week we had a day where the same symbol would get issued by two different strategies and it happened to the tune of about six times uh, on that day which that is also another strange occurrence. Now today, we didn't have near that many, but we can see right here DMTX was triggered three different times from three separate, separate strategies. So that one's gonna kind of fit in the middle between a trade around and you know going risk off. So you know we'll get into the details of that one. All right, so let's just do this. Let's sort the all trades blotter, and by the way, Lots of different ways to view the information. Uh, if you go to the Holly channel, you'll notice that there are two separate blotters, one for closed positions and one for open positions. For these purposes, I'm just going to right click and hit view all trades. This gives us all trades and then we can sort by either strategy, time, or any other metric that we want to sort by. So I'm just going to start off by sorting by risk on profit, and we're going to talk about the one trade around uh, that fits the classic definition today, which was the FOMX. And when you're starting to try to get familiar with this methodology, it goes something like this. When you're watching Holly do her thing in the session, and you see her enter a position, and that position immediately goes red or maybe she exits on a reduced risk basis or a stop out basis, that's when you know we go into trade around mode. We can see over here, I'll just move the exit reason column a little closer to over here. So we can see FOMX 
risk off, Holly took a three cent loser on that on that stock. We can see why she got out because as soon as she got in, things started getting a little volatile. So she's thinking to herself, why take the risk? I'm going to reduce it. It's not worth it. So she took a three cent loss on that. And now let's take a look at that stock on the intraday five minute here. It's also very interesting on the daily as well. We'll get to that in a sec. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got our boxes working again, yay, and our arrows. So um, we can see the entry price Holly called was 949. This was the five minute bar, which was about right here. So we can see Holly gets long, corresponding price of 949. Profitability is quickly achieved to some extent, and then we took this little pullback here. So a lot of the times when things get wicky, that's when Holly likes to go into uh, reduce risk mode, and that's what she did, securing her three cent loser. Now, here was the stop loss. 924 was the stop loss. So we have to be cognizant of the fact that, yeah, Holly got out, but never even really, you know, got maybe within. 70% of our stop loss, maybe a little bit less. Um, so a good trade nonetheless. So, you know, of course, as Steve and Andy and I always like to say, Holly can't read charts. When we're participating with Holly, we have to be wearing our trader's cap. So first, first and foremost, you know, the reduced risk functionality, Holly's going to use it every time, just like she's going to use her uh, time stops. She's going to play by the rules. Um, so Holly takes her loss, but then as we most often see in a Holly play, uh, usually right after the entry, uh, whether it stays above the entry price or pulls back a little bit, which a lot of stocks out there do, uh, very infrequently are we just boom in the money. It's nice when we are, but especially in today's market environment, we might be in a little 10 to 15 cent flux before the move occurs. But having said that, once we see this stock dip below the entry price, all we do is set a limit alert or a price alert by right clicking, making sure the right price, making sure the right direct is to and long. And of course, this is going to auto execute um, because you know that's already happened. Um, but during the day, it is not. So when you get the trigger, yes, this is once again passing through the threshold that Holly recommended. Uh, it's not too bad to make a second entry on that uh, most of the time. If you're in the money on the first lot, by the time that second entry presents itself, that's a good time to add to a position, which once again is one of the harder things to figure out, especially when you're new to the game of day trading. So this is really the only trade around that, that sticks out, but we have additional opportunity. Can I just jump um, in because you know, there's, there's a good question asking, um, well, can can the Holly be uh, set up and, and, and used for swing trades? Well, yeah, and I, the, that's kind of the way I answered. I wanted the, the daily chart to come out on this one so you can see that all the trades that Holly takes, they start off as intraday trades, but you, the trader, have to look at this daily and say, oh my gosh, look at how this thing broke out of that congestion. This might be a great signal. Thank you, Holly. I might hold on to another half of this for swing trade. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, so they're not not all the daily charts might look that way, but the answer to the question is all of Holly's trades start off with a, st a statistical uh, probability for the entry that she's taking. Now, whether or not she gets out, you know, is not up. It, it shouldn't always be your determining factor as what you're going to do because you, the discretionary trader, have to take it from here and look at the daily chart and say, oh, geez, Holly, I understand you're the AI and you're programmed to get out at the end of the day, but my God, this thing just closed on highs and broke out of tremendous congestion. This could be considered a swing trade. So that's the answer that we give. It's discretionary. Certain charts are going to look better than others, but there's no reason why you can't take a trade like this and turn it into your own swing trade. Right, so you know, when you look at it from that perspective, we have a statistically strong intraday signal, and then when we see this type of activity, we're like, oh my goodness. Of course, you know, the only thing that's going to uh, attune you to this is repetition, repetition, repetition. Just like the simple methodology here of setting a price limit at the original entry point, the poly goes right on the position. And once we get used to seeing this pattern, then, you know, from these webinars, you're probably going to recognize what I do next, you know, because Holly 
has the interest signal here, whether we just observe or add more shares on the second punch through, either way is fine. But then again, if we draw a line straight across from the previous high, now whether you're a person that uses wicks or you use candle bodies, we'll just kind of mark it right in the middle there, let you take your pick. But you see what I'm getting at here, whether we go up here or we, whether we go right here, which if you really want to be clean, you kind of have to go there. Um, but what do we have here? We have a range break. So Holly's already telling you statistical strength here. We look over here and we're like, oh my goodness, it's, it's trying to get above, it's trying to get out of here, right? That's, that's another good, you know, that's just affirmation, right? Statistically strong, affirmed by a breakout on the daily, you know, fantastic. And then on sometimes, you know, sometimes stocks like this, they'll go sideways again and present yet even another entry just from a simple range break. Once again, uh, the beauty of this little pattern also is it's fractal. It can occur, it's occurring simultaneously on this time frame and this time frame right here. And so when you start to see these things and the notches keep getting filled in, it's like, okay, this is a good trade. It's statistically strong. Now I see the daily. It's, it's elevated. It's no longer a good trade. It's a great trade. And then through additional setups on the daily, I mean, literally, your whole day could have been made just on this one little stock, you know, if you know how to react accordingly. Okay, so that's the classic trade around today. Uh, now let's talk about little LCI today, which was a decent example, not of a trade around, but uh, to go risk off on a trade when Holly is going to book her profit and take her 25 cents. You know, how can we try to figure out if this makes sense to hold? And it's really a bunch of basic parameters, but you have to be aware of them um, so that everything clicks. So here we can see Holly's entry price, uh, $30.67. We'll just draw a line for easy reference in this bar right here. So pretty much this was just off to the races, you know, immediately. Now what we're going to do here is LCI was pushing through resistance. Uh, pushing through resistance is centered around a 60 minute hold time. And of course we can see right here, that is when Holly exited. She held it for an hour, followed her instructions and got out. So here we are at the entry bar, 810. 910 is gonna be about right here. So, you know, of course, at this point in time, there was a lot more uh, profit on the table to be had. Uh, of course, this one kind of comes into some basic trade management skills um, as well. And, you know, in order to have expectations, okay, we're in a winning trade. Well, how far is it going to go? When do I get out? Well, once again, um, a good way to kind of estimate that to see how much room we have is to look and see where we are on the daily. Look to the left. And we can see, you know, at the tops here, we're getting to the bottom of these candles or maybe encroaching on the top wick there, and that's going to help you kind of gauge, okay, are you going to be popping up to some short-term resistance or, you know, exactly how much room uh, is there on this thing? Am I getting greedy? Am I, am I selling myself short by getting out too early? Uh, these are all demons that can be satisfied by just doing a couple of simple things, which is if we're in this, say we're in a 200 share lot, because number one, the entry price here just happens to coincide with a range break as well, just perfectly. Now, it did expend a lot of energy getting back up here, but this is where Holly is saying statistical, statistical probability is with us. I don't care about these three five-minute green bars or this 15-minute period where it ran up. I'm saying it's still statistically strong, and it wasn't until it got to right here. And then, of course, we can see. So let's say we participated with a 200 lot. Well, whether it's here, 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 or up here, if we look over here and go, you know what? This might be a good place to lighten the load. So what do we do? We dump half our position. We give the other half back to our stop loss or our entry point. Here, if we would have done that, still would have been in that thing until we decided it was time to get out. So this is a good example of acknowledging the fact that either, you know, 
hey, I'm going to try to take some off the table on the way up, or if you're following Holly to the T, she gets that down here. Maybe you get out of your whole position. Maybe you get out of half. Give the other half back down to. If you're a trader that likes to uh, to be a day trader, and if you if you've been in our live trading room with Barry, um, you'll see this being demonstrated over and over. As the green bar is moving up, the people in the room are selling some along the way. Barry is selling some along the way. There's a great old axiom that says, "It's better to sell when you can than when you have to." And when you can is when they're reaching up and grabbing the offer with both hands as the green bars are going in your direction. So unless you've designated this as a, hey, I'm just going to enter this, go back to my second job, and this is going to be a swing trade, I'm going to put my stop down here at this price. If that's not your style and you're trying to you know, be in rhythm with the market like they're doing in our live trading room each day with Barry, you'll notice that when those green bars are moving in your direction, they're taking some off. And so that is, it's a very good habit and it's demonstrated uh, daily um, in the live trading room for this type of time frame that you're talking about here. Yes, indeed it is, and if you guys, if there's anybody out there that has not been attending the free trading room with Barry, um, then you probably ought to sign up since it's for free uh, and start hanging out in there. A uh, nice little community developing uh, in that room, and uh, not only does Barry do a great job, uh, but we've got some other traders in there that have been in there for a very long time uh, that are you know, commanding a great deal of respect and spitting out some good calls as well. All right, so what do we have left on the Holly radar today? Let's talk about the triple dip here on DMTX. So we can see this is in time sort right here. The first one was the strategy, the turn, uh, issuing a trade at 9.03, which, you know, we're looking at it right here. Of course, let me... Of course, we have more things to discuss about that guy. Okay, so first Holly entry right here, and of course, this one looks like a pretty thinly traded stock. So we can see, you know, in this bar right here, we only had 600 shares trade. Um, so I know that some people are going to shy away from these, um, but if you're like me and a few other people, you're like, well, if I get 100 shares off, why not? You know, <laughs> um, not get too exposed here. Um, but you know, for some reason, this thing was setting up statistically. That's why three different strategies uh, triggered on it. So, you know, let's just kind of highlight the different entry levels here. There was the first one, uh, second one, and I believe the first two were profitable on a risk-off basis, and the third one was the only one. Uh, but once you see this setup occurring, you know, so our first entry is there, second entry here, it's almost like Holly was going, you know, just on a play-by-play -play here, and then I believe the third one was a little bit higher. Um, but the interesting thing is even if you would have taken all of these entries on a risk-off perspective to the close, all of them would have been uh, profitable. Now, of course, today Holly was risk-off, um, so we had, what, eight cents on this one, 25 on that, so... Still 25 cents on the three lot is the way I would look at it. So, you know, nothing just jumps off the page as far as what we're seeing on the daily here other than pop finally popping out of that little range there and continuing uh, on up here. It's kind of a kind of a no man's land. I mean, don't you think so, Steve? I mean, with yeah. what we have over here. Yeah, it's getting a little bit ahead of itself probably. It's going to need to do something uh, yeah. in the way of taking a breath. Yeah, yeah. The only, uh, you know, only thing is this one was a little thin, but like I said, you know, a lot of the times on these thin ones, you can still get off a couple hundred shares and uh, capture that move. Quarter's nothing to sneeze at, hmm. um, especially when it's uh, diversified into three separate entries. Yeah, All interesting right. to see that. Yeah, so that kind of wraps up the uh, the Holly analysis today. So even on a day, and let's just kind of take one more peek at what we were up against today. Uh, I, for one, for a statistical model, just to kind of hold its own or be flat today, that uh, that's okay in my book because these two days right here, I mean, trying to assess uh, what is uh, a prudent course of action, we all know has not uh, been quite that simple. So Holly... Uh, keeping her powder dry uh, for the next session. All right, Steve. So right, where to next? Let me show everybody this slide real quick here. Oh, boy. We, uh, 
That doesn't, even do, that doesn't even do it justice. <laughs> right. We'll get in. We'll you know we'll we'll show the real deal here in in the actual history. You know, I just want to kind of give everybody a peek. Um, starting about uh, two and a half hours in, or excuse me, uh, six thirty. Yeah, but about two and a half hours in um, is when things started getting interesting uh, on this ticker. Of course, it was active from the very beginning. It really was. But, yeah. You know, uh, its normal frequency is how many per day, right? Yeah. It, it, you 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 can see a couple of duplicates that might pop in there every now and then, but usually by the end of the day, I've got about maybe you know five, four or five or six total symbols to look at that are coming through this washout type pattern um, as they're doing their 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 thing. And I've I've talked a lot about the washout bounce in the last few webinars, and uh, we're not going to go too deep into it again. But on an individual basis, it kind of signifies that hey, the coast is clear. Um, the storm clouds just passed. I think the worst is behind us. And in a lot of these cases, there's good uh, case to be made where I demonstrate certain certain names get washed out in the first 15 minutes from the algorithms and the HFT uh, stop hunting that goes on uh, viciously in this market in, the, in in these days in the first 15 minutes. So I've been using this uh, alert for you know over a month now. And um, I've never seen this many alerts come out at once. They were they're all they were everywhere. They were just absolutely ubiquitous. Um, but what's the point here? You know, going back again to last Thursday for those that were in attendance, I wasn't, but I heard the great argument that was made and put forth before the sell-off on Friday that Jamie and Andy were noticing a lot of um, the strategy short called uh, topping formations. Well, uh, a very, very unusual handful set of topping formations came through, and then what do you know? The very next day, oof, we all saw what happened. Well, skipping back to my washout bounce here, and I'm going to try and select a few for the end of the uh, webinar today to probably show some of the ones that I like going forward. But if you all recall, I've back tested this thing a few times publicly, and I've shown that once we have this type of washout bounce. Um, those of you that like swing trading, you know, the back tester showed a, a, a very decent three to four day continued lift higher after the washout bounce. That tested very well. But then if you tried to go beyond three or four days, you know, and back test seven or eight days, the whole strategy fell to crap again. So with all that said, and all the stocks that we're putting in these patterns today, they all make up the market in general. We all see what happened today. It was quite the reversal. Um, knowing how these stocks particularly and typically back test, uh, I would not be surprised to see a few more days of some gravitational moves higher in many of the names that popped on there. So just like Andy and, and Jamie were saying, hey, watch out first, possible watch out below tomorrow based on all these topping short formations that, that showed up out of nowhere. Well, today my bottoming formations, they just showed up out of nowhere and they are just everywhere. I mean, that. That, that slider is still scaling. That is a giant, giant list. I never would have imagined I'd see a list this big. So the bigger picture is the way these things normally back test is three to four decent days of some hopefully upward follow through. So we'll just keep that little bias in the back of our minds. Um, if we roll over and just fall south again tomorrow, forget everything I just said. But for now, all I have to go on is that crazy bounce that we just put back in this market, much like we did after Brexit. And all of those uh, returns that showed up on the washout bounce today, maybe there's a bigger picture that's going to say we have a few more days of uh, some safe bidding and, and slowly moving higher over the next few days. We will see. I don't know. The answers are in the back of the book. Yes, indeed. And, you know, when days like this occur, just like with the, you know, hey, we're going to be in cash for the trade of the week, you know, a lot of the times we all just have to go, okay, well, we just have to see what happens. Before we can really, you know, form a game plan uh, moving forward, you know. Jesse that's, Livermore that's, said that's, most of his money was made by sitting. You don't always have to be in the game. You don't always have to be swinging the bat at every ball that's coming at you. That's true, and that, that brings up an uh, an observation out of my brain over the past 15, 20 years, and that is, you know, we've all been in the trading game for so long that we all know that in a and I hate even using this this descriptive phrase, which is a normal market. I mean, what does that even mean anymore, right? Um, but if we still use that uh, phrase, normal market, um, 
if it's a normal month, then we know that it's just going to be pretty much normal trading. You know, if we just scale, let's pretend like we're going back in time to the beginning of this range right here. You know, uh, just more up and down, more up and down. But there will be, you know, anywhere from two to four days on a typical month where there's really a lot of opportunity in the market. Um, so, you know, we can show you opportunity every day because that's what we do and that's what our niche is, is taking the data and giving you the important data so that you do have daily trading opportunities, sometimes more, sometimes few. But when you see something like this, where some of the times it's five or six plays and then all of a sudden windows that were less active start becoming really active, well, you know, once again, kind of circling back around to the comments I made at the beginning of the webinar, what does it mean? Well, we don't really know yet. We just have to keep taking these things and, and, and forming a larger picture moving forward so that we can make, you know, prudent and, you know, pragmatic decisions moving forward. So, Steve, just taking a look at the clock, you know, we got 20 minutes. we got to save a little time for Scott. Um, so do we want to start going over some of these issues here? Sure, and somebody asked, of course, uh, if they could have the washout bounce, so I just put a copy of that uh, in the chat window, the, uh, the, the uh, cloud link. Just mm -hmm. copy that link, and you can load directly from your cloud. But, yeah, there's a handful to choose from, and there's a few that uh, I think are of interest, so um, we can touch on those. There's also one that I thought was interesting on the trend change lubricant. Why don't we actually just start with that one, since sure. there's only one of those. Um, I really like the way you want me to drive, or you want me to flip it back to you real quick? No, you go ahead and drive. Okay. I'll just find uh, which one was well, it. Well, and that's also too about the trend change. That kind of throws that game off a little bit. Blue, um, yeah, right. blue is the, is the stock. So we got Bluebird right here trying to poke out of its little range. Yep. Yep. I actually, on this one, want to kind of line up those two exactly. I want to let that other wick just kind of hang out there and get maybe an early start on it. So it's that one right, yeah, just a little bit higher. Oh, we're talking so about right here. Exactly, yeah, that's the okay. line right there. And forget that little one that's sticking up. We'll get we'll get a head start on that. But um, that looked to me to be an interesting level. So we now, want to use 47, yeah, I think that's 69 there. Hold on, my okay. crosshair is... Uh, Give me fits here. And then one of the uh, one of the main reasons that we're focused on this one here is uh, it's close to a level of interest, a possible breakout, but it's got almost 40% short the float. So uh, only 36 million shares in the float, not a huge one, but if that thing does start going, um, it's got enough of a significant short float. And after he sets the alert, I'll have him zoom way out and you guys can see just how trend change uh, set up like what we normally like to do, uh, how this looks on the bigger, oh, bigger picture. So that, the high of that bar is 59.63, correct? Okay. Okay. 59.64. TCL 40%. 40% on the short float. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. after he sets that, go ahead and zoom way out. You guys can just see, you know, how far the stock has fallen. The shorts have made their money. So um, that's a pretty significant line. If we can break back above that with the 40% short the float, um, history lately has been showing that can be a decent trade. So that one's a good one. Yes, indeed, that one does look good here. Hold on, one of my my cursors being hidden from me. Okay, there we go. All right, so. All right, so some of the ones that I liked on the uh, on the bounce, and we're yeah. going to want to look at both uh, the intraday too. But um, let's start with the uh, home H O M B. That one was right. near the uh, the close. Okay, and as we can see, okay. there's our uh, nice little washout candle. Yeah, this is not a stock that's going to zero. It's been moving higher across the uh, the intraday um, on the daily chart, which is great. Now, uh, on the intraday, we just check real quick. We make sure that wick 
uh, that all occurred in the first 15 minutes. Perfect. I like to use a 15-minute chart. He uses a five. It's no big deal. But what I have to see is that washout in the first 15 minutes, which signifies that is uh, the stops being run. That's just how our market works these days. I've been on the wrong side of getting washed out right there where that arrow is, only to watch the price just drift higher for days on end after that happens. And so the idea was let's stop being a victim and let's start being a predator using this particular candle to identify some entries. So um, that uh, that would be one I would use just the high of today if it follows through. We could mark that one up. Right, high of today. So we'd be looking, let's see here, 2279. And again, just a solid reminder, if you see the washout in the middle of the day, no, that's not what we want to see. We want to see that washout in the first 15 minutes, which is pretty much standard for um, the uh, alerts that are coming through this washout bounce. Right. Did we have a, uh, was it worth notating the short float on that HOMB? Um, no, I didn't even have it. Okay. Uh, I can get it, but I don't think it's significant. Right. It's more about the washout. Yep. It's more about the washout. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's only 6% short float. Okay. Once okay. again, you know, the never necessary, just turbocharging. What else do I like? Uh, PCI. Now, this is an interesting one because it actually kind of pierced through yesterday's close. You see that? That little distance in between? But that's okay. I mean, I still think that that was a wonderful washout based on the four or five days. Look at those candles last week. One, two, three, four days into a perfect spinning top. Really nice um, spinning top, and then two or three days of sell-off, and then a nice candle taking out, running the stock exactly, running those stops out below, and then closing back near highs. Now, the reason it dropped off the radar is because it uh, went through yesterday's change of close. I might need to adjust that, but I kept that one written down. Let's take a look at the 15-minute the chart just to verify and make sure, yep, there's our first 15-minute of the day washout. All of the pain and panic occurred there in the first 15 minutes, as usual. That's what we want to see. So that one was interesting. Um, it's going to go with the high again today? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, 1998 it shall be. And I mislabeled the other one. See, I'm so used to putting TCL in here. This is a washout, but fear not. We can edit those. All right, we got that one. And then what we do is we just come in here and edit uh, HOMB. Edit those notes for a washout on the daily. The other one is similar to this one in that it, uh, and a lot of his stocks did this today. They didn't stop it unchanged. They went through and pierced yesterday's red, so pool, P-O-O-L, um, but had a more, much more precipitous fall, and I really think it did a nice job of running out stops. Let's take a look at our 15-minute candle, make sure it was all run out in the first 15 minutes, and yeah, for the most part it was actually the first 30 minutes, and that's okay, yeah. um, but it's got to be 15 to 30 minutes, and then uh, had a nice close. And we'll be using the high of this one, 95.79. All right. That one is locked and loaded as well. Yeah. That's all I had written down. We could go through and click through some, but I think we're running out of time. So unless you had some more... Well, and once again, you know, just due to conditions uh, and what may or may not happen tomorrow, I think, I don't know, force enough for now. Yeah, if, if, if we had a crystal ball that was going, yes, yes, tomorrow is going to be definitely up. Well, then, of course, we'd add more. But there, is no on the side of my there is no definitely in my market vocabulary. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and dump these into the, uh, into the chat area real quick here. All right, cool. Leon tells me he converted the... Uh, uh, the uh, the washout bounce into a top list, which is probably a good idea. Leon, the only reason I did it is I really wanted to back test it, and uh, I was pleased that I did, so I could see and I could have comfort, as I mentioned earlier, that these things typically will continue to gravitate three or four days higher before they fall apart. So, but now I know that, 
now that I know that, I should probably figure out a way to uh, collaborate. And well, and that's an interesting list. observation because a lot of the times, you know, seeing things in that spreadsheet format and with all those columns, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. we start to notice different things that we would have never been aware of. Um, but in any case, yeah, we always encourage people to experiment with configurations, um, constantly seeking to uh, improve the mousetrap. So you dropped that in there, those price alerts? I did. Okay. Well, great. Um, let me know how that works out, Leon. I'll probably be right behind you. Uh, and again, everybody, just a quick, uh, the, let me put it this way. For those of you who have a second job, and you like this washout bounce and you understand the concept of this washout bounce and how this candle can be considered a decent entry on somebody else's pain, all you got to do is log into your account at 15 minutes before the market closes and see which ones are near the top of the list, which ones are looking good, if they have a long tail, um, if they washed out on the open. If you see anything you like, you know, it's only a 15 minute nod to just kind of check in on the market and see what trade ideas washout bounce is spitting out and uh, take it from there and, and you know, put your trader's hat on. Absolutely. Simplicity. Keeping it simple. All right, everybody. Thanks for attending. Um, Scott, if you're, if you're listening, waiting in the wings, we're ready for you. Waiting on mute. Yes. Thanks for the great presentation, guys. Um, Perfect. Hold that slide. And uh, something we always like to remind everyone of is that we like to thank the attendees uh, for attending our webinars by offering a little bit of a discount. And the uh, that code, the office, all caps, just the way you see it, is good this month for 15% off your first month or year of premium, which is a great deal. It'll also take 10% off the first month or year of standard. Standard also includes. Um, your real-time data it covers your exchange fees. It includes that training, the full hour, one-on-one -on -one training. Uh, both tiers do, but it's also included in the standard. So you could join for just 99 a month, less that 10%, and get a full hour of training, which is an outstanding. I mean, that's a crazy value. And then you can decide to upgrade to Trade Ideas Premium. But uh, Trade Ideas Premium is the best choice. It includes Holly, the AI, uh, the back testing tool, the odds maker, price alerts, and that's just 1888 a year, and you can get 15% off that using that code uh, off your first year. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, you can find a recording of this later tonight or tomorrow morning. And there's also a PDF of the discount code and the contact information that you're seeing on the screen right now. If you go to the Handouts panel and click on the plus button, so go to Handouts on your GoToWebinar interface, click the plus, and then there's a PDF link right there to download. So you can follow Steve Gomez at Today Trader on Twitter. Uh, Jamie Hodge is QuantBot on Twitter, or follow our CEO, Dan Merck, in Trade Ideas 1. If you like us on Facebook, you'll find some additional things we occasionally present to Facebook alone, and that's facebook.com slash tradeideaspro. Email Jamie direct at jhodge at Trade Ideas, or Steve, Steve at Trade Ideas. Or if you have a question for support, info at trade-ideas.com. And of course, our phone number is great for billing or subscription issues if you encounter any. Um, thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Steve. Uh, there's no um, QA demo webinar this week. Uh, we're inviting everyone to a partners webinar tomorrow. I encourage everyone to sign up for that and either attend or watch the uh, replay of that on the video. And then we will have our Trade of the Week webinar at the normal time on Wednesday. So if you're not uh, already on the Trade of the Week list, just go ahead and sign up for that. Uh, otherwise, most of you are already on that list, so just go ahead and uh, and come. We'll see you there. It should be an interesting one. Thanks, guys. Thanks for attending, everyone. Have a Thank great you. week.